in ifadas in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Syria had called for it. Not everyone accept the concept is open arms. There are still plenty of challenges and obstacles that must be addressed and tackled. Can civil state and Islamic principles co co coexist, for instance? Are they compatible? How different is civil state from secular state? And with all the ambiguity surrounding civil state concept, how do we respond to a civil state demand? And it is to reflect on some of these questions that we are joined here this morning by our esteemed speaker, Professor Dr. Tariq Ramadan. Professor Tariq Ramadan, courses of Professor of Contemporary Islamic Studies at the Oxford University and also teaches at the Oxford Faculty of Theology. He's a visiting professor at the Faculty of Islamic Studies, Qatar, Senior Research Fellow at Doshiha University, that is Koto, Japan, and the Director of the Research Center of Islamic Legislation and Ethics, that is Doha, Qatar. I will leave this for Dr. Ahmad Farouk, uh, of course, to introduce further the, uh, Professor Tariq Ramadan to you. And indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged that Professor Tariq is with us this morning to share his thought, especially on civil state. Professor Tariq's talk yesterday on the awakening of the Muslim world was really, was really enriching. And I'm sure today's talk will be equally fantastic if it is not better. So ladies and gentlemen, with that remark, I hope everyone will share the thoughts and enjoy this talk today with Professor Tariq. Thank you again, everyone, for coming to this uh, seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I feel honored today to be able to speak in front of you. Especially, I'm very happy that I'm back to Penang, my hometown. And um, today we have with us uh, the esteemed Professor Torek Mohan. I think all of us, uh, I think I don't have to elaborate further about his credentials. Most of us know who Professor Torek Mohan is. And he's, I would say that, one of the most influential Islamic thinkers in the Muslim world. And uh, his ideas of reform and renewal are very uh, refreshing. And, and I think that uh, these are the ideas that should be discussed and among Islamic workers especially. And furthermore, we have a very important topic about the civil state, kind of uh, a new concept to many of us in, in Malaysia especially. And when, uh, if you look at the political uh, landscape of Malaysia, then we know that uh, the Islamic party of past, for example, has been harboring on this idea of establishing an Islamic state. And they came up with uh, a booklet about what an Islamic state is all about. And similarly, to counter that uh, religiosity, we find that even the ruling party, AMNO, came up with the idea of Islamic State as well. And when we look, or if we were to read what they had explained in their booklet about Islamic State, to me, it was basically a copy and paste from Al-Hakam Sultaniyah by al Mawardi, uh, when they explained that uh, in an Islamic State, non-Muslims should not build houses to be higher than Muslim houses. And non-Muslims must pay jizya. And the way to pay jizya is that they must walk on, the, on, the, on their feet, not by using any sort of camels or horses. Of course, nowadays, cars, BMWs or Mercedes. And they have to walk with their head down. And they have to give the jizya. That was written clearly in, in what, uh, if you were to read, uh, what was written in Amnos uh, Islamic State booklet. Right? I, I wasn't making it up, it was there. And um, this idea of, uh, of a civil state uh, is probably uh, new to many of us, but uh, 
uh, what we have seen from the Arab awakening, as mentioned by Professor Tariq in his latest book, the Arab awakening, or somebody, some people may call it as the Arab Spring, is that even the Ikhwan al Muslimun talking about Daulah uh, Madaniya, a civil state, or what we call in our language Negara uh, Madani, as mentioned by Dr. Dr. Samansur just now. So I think, uh, without further ado, uh, what is the concept of, of civil state, ideas and challenges? I think I would like to call upon Professor Tariq Madan to deliver his speech to all of us. Thank you. Rajeev <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear uh, sisters and dear brothers and dear friends, thank you so much for this invitation this morning here. Once again, since I arrived in Kiel, uh, every time I visiting a place in Kiel here in Penang, it was uh, uh, really an amazing, uh, welcoming, very warm, very friendly, Read very uh, brotherly uh, uh, organized in a way, and I want to thank you for this because it's very uh, impressive for me, for my family, to see all of you coming and, and sharing views and, and, and not on very simple uh, topics. These are quite difficult ones. Thank you. So let me, let me uh, start. Uh, this discussion and, and as I heard since I came here the concept of the civil state versus sometimes in the minds of the people the Islamic state it's not always well understood well defined and uh, we sometimes are using it in a way which is based on the uh, what we hear coming from the West and now and that's true because what uh, Dr. Farouk was saying it's important when you listen to what is happening in Tunisia, what is uh, happening in uh, Egypt and other countries in the Middle East. This is now a concept that is used and sometimes used in a way to respond to the West, but not always understood that the people who are uh, listening to, to what is said, it's not always understood. And from where we are, it's important to do two things. And this is a, a, an intellectual requirement and a kind of a necessar necessary methodology when we use terms that are coming from a specific history. Is to do two things. The first one, from within, and this is, by the way, something which is not coming from the West in the, the critical thinking because Often when we are using a very strict methodology, intellectual methodology, by defin defining concepts and words, understanding uh, their dimension, their history, very often today we think that this is coming from a Western methodology, an intellectual requirement. And it's not true. If you come back to the Middle Ages, at the time where the Muslims were at the forefront of uh, any intellectual contribution in philosophy, in arts, in uh, men. And you look at the, the books they were writing. It's amazing. It's amazing because they were very strict intellectually speaking. When they were responding to uh, people who were attacking them or having an interfaith discussion or even among themselves between the scholars, they were used to be very strict. And by starting by stating what the opposite side, the opponents, was saying. And he, for example, starting by, you are saying this, 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 to this I'm going to respond. 